uh, Lorelei asks, Crystal, how can I then maintain and grow with raising my vibrational frequency when my partner is around me 24 hours a day and starts from the moment I awake and is so negative around me? You have two choices here. You either moderate your exposure, and this means literally removing yourself from the environment. You have a safe space to go, not safe like you're, it's violent, but like you, you get a happy place where you get to leave the home because the home here feels polluted to me. You get to leave the home and you get to go sit in a park, do yoga, tai chi, hang out with your friends, like be in a happy space. You need that more and thus in doing so, you moderate your exposure to kind of the troll under the bridge, which is they're showing me as your husband, I'm sorry. They're showing me kind of as this like troll under the bridge, like, oh, I don't know, it's kind of a bummer. You've got to get out of that and you've got to get into the sunshine more. You cannot be physically proximate to the energy of this person as much as you are. So this for you requires that you do make some choices. Now that's the first thing you can do is find ways to go somewhere else to be a happy space or in your happy space, or you leave the situation. You leave the situation. I'm sure you've thought of this yourself, and I'm sure there are all sorts of things that would keep you from doing that or that would sort of point in a direction that you might need to do that, but that's the only other thing you can do is throw the pieces, the jigsaw pieces of your life into the air and see where they land and start again, start placing them in a different order, altogether different to create a new landscape for yourself. Because this right now is toxic to you and it feeds into behaviors that you partake in about you and your life and successes and plateaus, things that you could achieve but are not because you are stuck in this vortex, this whirlwind, if you will, with this low vibration person. Now, just because divine energy is stronger than lesser or lower energy doesn't mean lower energy can't be strong, especially when we have all of these aqua cords that are changing the situation, changing how we feel about the situation, keeping us stuck in it. Negative people can be very, very strong and they will change who it is that we are. I think Tony Robbins or some of these gurus say, the five people with whom you spend most of your time, most of your minutes, not the most important people, just the people you spend the most time with are the five people that you become or who change who it is that you are. You become like them. And if you cannot maintain a high vibration frequency, you have to get away because you will be sucked into it like a black hole. You will become like them and it keeps you from achieving at a higher level, which you brought in with you, okay? And this blueprint we're talking about, you brought in with you high levels of achievement, high levels of understanding, an acumen and acuity for metaphysical constructs and concepts, building of which so energy would feel like to me. I don't know you that well, Lorelai. Energy, working with energy as a construct in the healing and the recalibration of people. And you have spirit messaging and you have a lot going for you, but we've got hit and miss and you've got to do something radical. Change happens when you, when you refuse to tolerate something that you know is doing damage to you. Now, there are many things you can do in terms of self-care that would help you, you know, help you to have a higher vibration, at least moderately so, for the period of time that you're in this situation or around this person. Things like, we just talked about them, drinking a lot of water, detoxifying yourself, studying, getting your, your head into books and, and sitting under teachers and getting turned on by, by different concepts and also getting out there and fellowshipping with people is so important. Being around people who are high vibe and who are, who are like vibing. That's important for you because it rubs off on you because it's divine dominant energy. It's always gonna change you. If you can put yourself in proximity to people like that, that's a powerful way to recharge your batteries and keep, and keep your head above water, but that's what it is. It's a survival situation for you, really. I mean, it's a question for you, ultimately, what do you wanna do? Who do you say that you are? Who do you say that you are? And if that is who you are, why are you doing this? Some, one of these things is not like the other, okay? Now, I also know with you, Lorelai, that you have this polluted house that we're talking about. Let me get some water because we're running energy right now. <clears throat> Lorelai, we know that you have this pollution in your house and you are on the live 
I know. And, and you talked to me, uh, ultimately, about me coming into your house and doing some work. And the live that you were there to witness, we were talking to somebody who, as I was walking through their house, I was kicking up, I was kicking up these patterns, these Brillo pad, this scratchy, weird, disharmonic energy throughout the house. And it was all over the floor, and it was up in the ceilings, and it's just so many thought forms. And that was as a result of that person's depression. These were not entities that were external and came into the situation. These were entities that this person had created, right? You were there. I know you know that. And so you have this. You have thought forms there. And your husband or your, your, the people in your house are turning these out like it's their job. Like, <laughs> my job is to create weird thought forms that keep everybody in this weird space that they're in. So you've got people who are in a dedicated pattern of creating thought forms and who are feeding the thought forms, therefore allowing them to develop into fully intelligent and autonomous entities that seek to continue to uh, use all of you as a host. And so we need to do lots of cleaning of the space energy, which I'm sure you've done. I know you get it, but it doesn't change the fact we've got somebody creating thought forms like it's their job. That's always happening. So your cleansing is maintenance and management. And it's something you do all the time at the same time as you're taking care of yourself. Just to take care of the thought forms. What we create out of our own personal chaos, not on, like a poltergeist, we can uncreate. Okay, we're sovereign in that. We can uncreate that. However, sometimes when we have dysfunctional energy in the house as a result of a person or a situation, maybe violence in the house or lots of acrimony or tears going on and fighting in the house. External entities are attracted to that. These are your earthbound entities who have chosen for whatever reason not to leave this earth plane and go through the light and go to the other side. Instead, they are inordinately attracted to this chaotic, it, spirit shows it as disharmonic, Weird frequencies is what I'm hearing around your space. The energy of your space makes a weird sound in my ear. And this is a calling card. This attracts certain beings. And so you do have entities that are there with you, right? Yeah. They are connected to your situation. They don't leave until you do. They don't leave until something major off the Richter shakes the foundation of what you got going on right now. The whole house, like almost shaking something out and all the dust, the rug, the dust and everything, all the sediment and everything falls. Away. You've got to, there's a shake that has to happen. If you stay there, oh, there's got to be some major restructuring that happens in order for you to be able to do what you're supposed to be doing. But the problem is, and it's not just your husband you've got, I don't know who, who you have. I know you have a son. I don't know all who's around you or living there, but there are other people in this energy caught in the, the vortex of it. These people are constantly signaling. They're not just creating thought forms, which you can uncreate, and that's, we can do that, but they're signaling. And there's a response that's occurring. And you know there's that scripture, Spirit shows me, where Christ says, talks about casting out a demon, and you don't have demons. That's not what I'm saying, but it's a spiritual principle we're talking about here. You cast out a demon, but if you don't fix what's wrong, seven come in to take its place. You've got to fix what's wrong. And so you can do a lot of work here, and you can clear those that are attracted to the signal and who understand that they're creating a harrowing situation for you and yours, and they like that. You can clear them. Seven more come if you don't change the signal. How do you change the signal? You're not the signal. Well, you do contribute to it. You buy into it, sure, you react to it, you're human. But nothing changes unless the, unless the signal changes. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your two choices are get out, go find something else to do, somewhere else to be. I don't even know if you can do that, though, for substantial hours a day to recalibrate and take care of yourself and give yourself some sunshine and some space, or get out, start over. All the jigsaw pieces, where do they fall? create a new landscape, create a new portrait. I realize, having been married one million times myself, how difficult it is to make changes like that. I get it, but I would not be where I am today. I would not be where I am today if I didn't throw those puzzle pieces up in the air and let them land 
and figure it out from there. I would not be where I am today. That's my answer for you, my dear. Much love, much love. The signal's the problem, it's not the entities. The entities will come back, you've got to clear that signal. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go to crystallinecompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.